we are, sorry. Okay. Uh, struggle, it doesn't want to live. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. We are having an exciting one today because we got a new project. I uh, went and picked this thing up yesterday and uh, it's not going to be a big, you know, it's not like that kind of a project. It's a, uh, let me just, let me show you. Ta-da! This is a 1998 GMC Crew Cab Long Bed with the crowd favorites. 6.5 turbo diesel. Now, if you're looking at this truck and thinking, hey, that seems familiar. Well, of course it is. I had the exact same thing in a red version. If you look at some previous videos, I did a ton of work to that. We put a lift kit on it, smokestacks on it. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. I think turbo injector some stuff. But I sold that truck and uh, I kind of missed it. But I wasn't honestly looking for this thing. I was just playing on Facebook Marketplace like I always do. And this popped up. It was about 20 miles away from me for very cheap. Talked to the guy. He said, if you come get it, it's yours today. So last night, me and the wife loaded up about 7.30 and drove out about an hour. Went and picked this thing up. And the guy said, it'll drive uh, as long as you keep oil in it. So I brought a gallon and a half of oil with me. We topped it off. A couple quarts. Made it about 10 miles down the road. Stopped for some dinner. Checked the oil, and it was nothing on the stick. Put the other gallon I had in it, made it home, and now there's nothing again on it. So, so this thing's definitely got an oil leak. If you look up under it, it's definitely got an oil leak somewhere. So that's step one. Step two. Oh, sugar. Step two. This thing uh, has a runnability issues. He said it was hard to crank, which, okay, glow well, plugs. He said that a shop told him that it needed an injection pump. I talked to him a little bit about it. He said he brought it to a shop to check the oil leak, and it was hard starting. And he said in the mornings until it warms up, it's kind of stumbly. So they took it to a shop. Shop said it needs an injection pump. He didn't want to pay that much money. He he admitted, he said, I have no idea anything about diesels or anything about this truck. So uh, injection pump's not a huge deal. You've seen me do a couple of them. I think I've done... I only videoed one. I've done three. But... um. <laughs> I don't think it's an injection pump. It will run fine, drive fine, and it'll just randomly stumble. It'll bog down, stumble, and go. Never cut off. He said it's never shut off on him. It's just always kind of run crappy like that. I don't think it's an injection pump, and I'll tell you why. These trucks, I've never noticed it on the gas engines, only on the diesel jobs. The original fuel tanks, the OE fuel tanks on these trucks, they had some sort of coating in them. And I don't know if it's because diesel fuel's in them, if it's the fuel that's doing this to them, but the coating on the inside of the tank eventually begins to flake off. The red truck I had, the exact, the one I had like this, that I bought it and they said it needed an injection pump as well. And that's what it was. The tank was full of crap. I had an extended cab version of this truck. Same thing. This is actually the fuel tank out of that extended cab version. Let me see if I can get to it. I don't know if you can see in there. All those little flaky bits. It's actually whatever coating is on the side of the inside of this tank. Now, what it'll do, it'll clog up the lift pump. You can see it in the fuel filter sometimes. It just clogs everything up. And so the fuel, fuel is intermittently getting to the injection pump and it'll stumble a lot. And that's what it felt like to me. So we're going to dive into that. And see, we'll diagnose the oil leak, we'll diagnose the runnability issue, and fix come what may. So I'm excited. Let's dive into this thing. Let's, uh, first step, I'm going to go ahead and just pull the fuel filter out. Check the fuel filter. It looks like it's got a newer filter on it. You can see, that's definitely an aftermarket filter. So we're going to pull that. Sometimes you can see that sediment in the base of the fuel filter. Um, and we'll start from there. So let's jump into it. All right, so disclaimer, because I can hear the keyboards typing away now. These trucks, the biggest issue they had was the PDM, FSD, fuel delivery module driver, whatever you want to call it. There's a million names for it, and everybody corrects me every time I say anything. But regardless, 
it's the control module for the uh, injection pump. Originally, they're mounted down here. You can see the original is still on there. On the side of the injection pump, they were prone to getting real hot and they would melt, crack, stop working. And a lot of times they would work cold, not hot. So yes, I'm aware of those. This one has been replaced, it's been relocated. And uh, I'm, I'm not worried about that right now. Because this truck runs, it drove the whole way here. It was stumbling. It, to me, it felt like a fuel delivery problem. So I'm not even gonna look at that for now. So now that that's out of the way, calm down. So let's jump into this fuel filter. All right, so like I said, I am two for two on 6.5 diesels with these fuel tanks having issues like this. So first thing you do is pull the fuel filter and check inside the bowl because a lot of the times the sediment will make it all the way there. And if it does, you should be able to see it in the base, in the, in the bottom of the filter housing. Let's pull this thing loose. This thing's had a filter put in it recently. Well, see that down there at the bottom? It looks kind of like dirt. What it is, is actually these little, I don't know what it is. I have no idea what they coated these tanks with from the factory. But it's this little coating that peels off the inside of these tanks. And it turns into like almost a powder. And it'll, say, it'll make its way through the filter. It'll make its way or through the sock. It'll make its way through the, uh, the lift pump. And I've actually seen it make its way all the way into the injection pump. This truck was a 97... It was an extended cab long bed, 6.5 diesel, 2,500. And this actually, it clogged all the way into the injection pump. I put a new tank on it, new lift pump on it, cleaned out the filter housing. And it still was having issues running. It actually was throwing a code for, uh, I forget what they call it. I think it was like a rotor cam timing. It's basically, there's a sensor in the injection pump that watches when it's spinning to know when to inject and it was saying that that actually wasn't doing it at the right time and i got real lucky because what i did <laughs> is i floored it and i floored it and i held it and it was stumbling and running like crap and blowing smoke left and right and sputtering and sputtering all of a sudden it just cleared up and ran fine and it's been running eight months since then no issues so got lucky with that one this one i don't think it's going to be in the injection pump i think it's going to be in the filter and in the lift pump. So what we're gonna do now is drop the tank. I'll drop the tank, pull the cinder out, and get you a look down in there, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's crawl up under this thing and see see what we gotta do to get the tank out. So let's uh, let's do that. All right, so I lied. I'm uh, actually gonna check for the oil leak first because I realize I can't run the truck without figuring out the oil leak. So. Uh, I'm underneath here. Things are moist, to say the least, but I'm pretty sure figured out our problem. Correct me if I'm wrong. That doesn't look like a permanent fix for an oil cooling line. There's a hole in this oil cooling line, apparently, and somebody has run a piece of rubber hose around it with some hose clamps. I got a sneaky suspicion. Oh, is that a spider? But that's going to be our problem. Oil cooler lines just run up. If you can see, there's one right there. There should be one next to it. Um, so yeah, they run up there and then up to the front to a little cooler. You can see where they come out right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and order both. There's no real point in just doing one. You gotta, you know, pretty much gotta take both out to get to it anyway. Uh, short version is, don't even fight with it, take this off. This oil filter housing off, take that big nut out, the whole thing comes off. There's a big old rubber O-ring. Order a new one. Don't reuse it. It will leak 100% of the time. They're like $7. So I'm going to order the O-rings for that. The oil cooler lines. And we're going to filter in some oil. Do an oil change while we're at it. And we should be 
Should be good to go. This thing's got a reman starter on it. Everything looks pretty good under here. Clearly there's no rust. Oh, uh, well, those zip ties on the trans shifter are mildly concerning. We'll deal with that at a later date. It's got an aftermarket exhaust on it. All the way back, I don't know if you can see to the back back there. Anyhow, things are looking good under here. I'm gonna go ahead while I got it jacked up. Check the front suspension. Brakes were squeaking on me on the way home. And uh, yeah, we'll get this oil leak knocked out and then we're still gonna go ahead and drop this gas tank. So let's crawl up under here in the back and get to dropping that. All right, so obviously I'm doing this outside on the ground. If you haven't noticed, the shop is a, a little bit messy. Anyway, we're doing this outside on the ground, so it's gonna be kind of hard to film the process of doing it. So I'm gonna just go over with you how to do it. Pretty simple, there's not much to do on these things. Oh, how? You got your filler neck and your vent hose. You gotta take those two off. Now the diesels. You'll see, you see those hoses right there? They are actually uh, pressure lines. And they got actually like fittings on them that screw into the uh, sending unit on the tank. But you can get those once you lower it down some. So the process is really pop your two hoses off here. And then you've got one there and your front hanger. And lower it down enough to where you can get to the things right there which I want to say is a 19 maybe 19 millimeters and then yeah then the whole tank drops I have no idea how much fuel's in here because the fuel gauge doesn't work so we're gonna kill two birds with one stone hopefully but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing off we'll drop this tank and I'll show you what's inside when we get to that point so let me jump to it well it's one of those times and when when you're making a video and you get a little stumped. I was fully prepared to pull this tank and see nothing but crap in it. Well, <clears throat> this tank's actually fairly clean. See, there's nothing really, you know, other than normal little bit of dirt debris here and there. Don't know what this tank is very clean, which is odd because it's clearly not new. <clears throat> this cinder, has clearly been in there for quite some time. Let's see how gross this thing is. Look at this sock. So, it's one of those times where you get a little confused because 90% of my mechanic knowledge, well, came from school, but it also comes from just experience. And like I said, I'm two for two on these trucks <coughs> having bad tanks. And that fuel filter definitely has some sediment in it. Question is where to come from? Uh, the tank is clean, so that's weird. Now these have an inline pump, it's called a lift pump, it supplies fuel to the to the injection pump. Now, granted, this thing has that massive oil leak, so everything's coated, but that's gross. I don't know if that's an original. I would doubt it from the '90s. I doubt that thing survived that long, but I'm gonna replace it. It's possible the pump. Started tearing itself apart. And that could be pushing fuel. It still comes on. I can hear it. You definitely hear it making noise. And obviously it's pumping enough fuel to start the truck. And run the truck. So I'm going to replace that. And they're like 40, 50 bucks. Just for poops and giggles. I am going to pull the fuel filter housing out. Clean it out real well. And I'm going to replace the... I'm going to put a new sending unit in there. I don't like that. Yeah, this uh, this truck is odd to me because the guy I bought it from said he didn't know a thing about engines or cars, trucks, engines, anything. Somebody has had this truck before because I was just looking at it. And that's a heat sink right there. And if you look, there's a wiring harness coming off the back of it. If you look down there, that's a pump module. Follow the wires. Do, 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 so why was this put in and unplugged? That one looks fairly new. I mean, it might just be clean because on top of the engine. So he made a little bracket for it. It doesn't have a heat sink, but... So that's odd. Uh, but yeah. So we're going to start... 
way it runs, I don't, I don't, I've never felt a bad injection pump do what this does. Um, so I'm going to weed out all the little stuff first. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get a new sending unit. I'm going to go ahead and get a new lift pump. I'll clean out the filter housing, put a new filter in it. I am, uh, I don't know if I'm going to stay with that one or go back to this thing. I don't know because it's all weird. This engine is very clean. You can see those are obvious blue Felpro intake gaskets. So the intake's been off before. He's got a mechanical wastegate spring thing on there. Sweet, uh, sweet filter on there. and uh, Oh, good. Nice open to the air. I don't know what that's all about. That's weird. Anyway, so I don't know about that. He said the uh, shop checked his turbo. He was going to replace it, and they said it was fine. There's no play in it, and it wasn't leaking, but I haven't pulled the intake off. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna start weeding out things one at a time. You can see, compressor's been redone. AC works in it. That uh, the hydro boost unit back there looks like a remand unit. So I don't know. I don't know what has and hasn't been done in this truck, which of course you never do usually. So we're gonna we're gonna start weeding out one problem at a time and see where that gets us. And if it's an injection pump, at least we'll be certain about it. So I'm going to get a new sending unit, lift pump, and we'll go from there. I think I think I have a fuel pump module. I'll have to go check. If I do, great. If I don't, we'll switch between the two, see if that makes a difference. And I will order the oil cool lines, and we will put this old girl back together. See what she likes. The truck is very clean. You can see someone's put new... Eyelets on the uh, glow plugs, and glow plugs look like they've been replaced. The fuel return lines have been replaced. I don't know if those injectors have or not. And they're they're rusty, but they look like I don't know how to explain this other than they look like new rust. If that makes any diff any sense to anybody other than myself. But anywho, we're gonna work on this. And we're going to get down to the bottom of this thing. We will fix this truck. So, I'm going to go order a ton of parts. We need some front suspension stuff too. And we will get tackling things one at a time. So, let's jump over to the day I have parts. Alright, so. Brainstorm is about to come in. So, I was going to move the fuel tank inside because it's very full of diesel. And I don't want to get water in it. I'm waiting on a sending unit to come in. And I was looking on this truck, something, I noticed something. The fuel tank straps are painted black. And <clears throat> now if you, I can't really, I don't know if you can see, it definitely was painted over the outside, but the fuel tank's not. That's that plastic cover liner. <clears throat> and there's no paint on it. I moved it, looked at it, there's no paint on it. Nothing else in the truck is painted black, which is weird. <sighs> I'm starting to think this tank has already been replaced with a used tank, or it was replaced a long time ago. Because this tank, like I said, is very clean, <clears throat> and it has a baffle in the bottom of it. That tank over there, you can see the butt corner of it, is the original tank out of the 97. There's no baffle in it, which is odd to me. And someone has painted the straps black. Which means this tank had to have been released for them to paint that because there's no paint on the tank anywhere. So I'm thinking this thing's been replaced before, <clears throat> which is why we're getting sediment in the fuel strainer, but nothing in the tank. Which is not a great thing because that means if it's still running like crap, that means that sediment got all the way to the injection pump, and it probably is an injection pump, but we'll deal with that in a minute. I'm still waiting on my old cooler line, so I can't even run the truck. I'm waiting on the old cooler lines and the sending unit. We'll put it back together, fire the truck back up, and I'll show you what it's doing, and we'll do a little bit more diagnosis. Maybe rule out injectors or something cheaper. But interesting find I just had. So I throw that in there. I right, Listen, I am a mechanic by trade, but I'm wrong. Sometimes I thought for sure this was going to be it. It wasn't it. So, hey, I don't want to 
edit out stuff to prove that I'm not wrong sometimes. But anyway, we're going to wait for new parts. And then we're going to figure out what's going on. Let's go. All right, so the parts have come in. And we're going to go ahead and tackle this oil leak. Now, I got the truck on jack stands and the grill off. And I have the grill off because the oil cooler lines come to here. There's this one and this one. You got to pull those two. And there's only like 17 freaking clamps between there and the back. Now, if we crawl under here. Went ahead and pulled the uh, little skid plate here. There's two lines coming in here. There is a clamp. I don't think I'll be able to show you. Maybe. Oh, yeah. You see that little plate right there? It's a clamp that holds those two on. And they come back here. Up through there. And they go up above the oil filter housing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this oil filter housing. Because I know from experience you have to. It's that one gigantic bolt. I think it's like a 36 millimeter or something stupid like that. Pull that out. We'll pull the whole oil filter housing out. I'm going to do an oil change on this thing anyway. So pull that out. And those, the two lines have those obnoxious little clips that hold them in. So those are fun to get to. So we'll get that in a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably drain the oil first. And then I will pull the cool lines from the actual cooler up front and let that drain for a second. And then we'll go ahead to get this uh filter housing off all right so we're back out of the truck after getting wrong parts getting sick for a week finally got the fuel tank back in and the oil cooler lines on and of course this truck what doesn't want to live putting the oil cooler line on and it's stripped out of the dang cooler itself luckily the line is okay it's just the cooler that's stripped out <clears throat> i'm guessing these lines have been out once probably and they we're barely in there to begin with. So I have to order a new cooler, but for now, I went ahead and just kind of looped them together with some hose, just so I can do some test running purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and let the lift pump fill the fuel filter. And we'll get a cranking on it and see if uh, see if she'll come back to life. So let's bleed this stinking fuel system. Let's see if I can tighten this line. All right, so topped up the oil, put an extra hose clamp down there because shockingly, my Harbor Freight hose clamps aren't holding. Um, anywho, top the oil, everything's good to go there. Um, <clears throat> let me show you guys what this thing is doing, and we'll see if we can narrow it down. got my foot to the floor right now. So, clearly, 
One, it might have a little air still in the system. It's usually right around 2,000. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's got a slight little stumble right here. Right there. Kind of see the camera shaking. <clears throat> the rev up fine, but it's got a little stumble. Right there. <coughs> now, granted, it could still have air in the system, but this is what I'm talking about when it came back to the tank with the crap in it. I think this is a used tank within that truck just because of the way that they had painted way they had painted the uh, tank straps. They had to drop the tank for that. It was an OE tank because it was still sealed on the cinder, but anyways, there was crap in the filter housing, which means there's probably crap all the way to the injection pump, which is what I think is making it stumble like that. And like I said, I've gotten lucky on the last one when I pulled that tank out of, and I literally just held it to the floor and eventually cleared itself up. So I'm going to let it run. I'm going to order a new oil cooler so we can stop you know this crap and I can actually test drive it but <coughs> we'll see the oil cooler in we're gonna take this thing up down the road a bunch and I'm just gonna give it every little bit of beans it's got and if we can clear this injection pump great if we can't it's like we're on a new pump now I'm assuming let me check this off Now I'm assuming these glow plugs have been replaced because they look like they have. And uh, <coughs> I'm on the fence. The injectors look like they might have been replaced, but it might just be my brain wanting them to be. I am going to try, like I said, and rehook this thing up and see if that changes anything. I kind of forgot that existed. Let's, let's see if that makes a difference. I don't know why they would put a remote one on there and then put a different remote one on there, but hey. Another key. Something's wrong with the fuel and the oil pressure. They're synced up. And it cranked up a heck of a lot better. Okay, pause. Well, see, now I gotta switch it back. Now I gotta switch it back and see what happens. Science. Changes anything. No. No way. It can't it can't it can't be that easy. I would love it to be that easy. <coughs> it, it couldn't. It couldn't, could it? Could it? I ain't even gonna touch the gas pedal. I mean, I'm not the only one that, that sees that, right? Right? There's no way it could have just been a bad. I mean, it's possible those those pump modules go bad all the time. They were known for that, but who installed that one? Switch it to the other one. And now I really need this whole cooler to show up so I can test drive this thing. Alright, pause. Pause until we get the, the oil cooler and then we're gonna see what the heck is going on with this thing. 
This is good news so far. All right, so the oil cooler will be here tomorrow. So I went in the meantime, was gonna try to clean up the little gremlins and mess in this truck. Uh, the fuel gauge didn't work. The wipers weren't working. It has fog lights mounted in the bumper. I don't know if they're factory or not. They look factory. If you put them in, it did a good job. Uh, those didn't work. Just random little stuff. Radio didn't work. Um, so, you know, buying any used car, you buy the previous owner's handiwork, if you want to call it. So uh, we found a few things. So this is the interior of the truck, by the way. It's a uh, kind of standard manual windows and locks, bench seat, bench seat. Um, but pull the gauge cluster out because the fuel gauge was working. It was actually tied into the oil pressure gauge. It would move with the gauge. It actually ended up being the tab on the back of the printed circuit board it had moved over and was touching. Quick and easy fix, no problem. But I noticed there was actually four toggle switches mounted on this dash. Now he's got fog lights mounted on the bumper, which I can't tell. <laughs> Are stock or not i'm assuming they're not because they're on the hook to a toggle switch there's also backup lights um but uh I, I i pulled out some mess um this truck had subs at one point apparently um speaker wires running all over the truck those are the little junky little rear fog lights that one's blue that one's clear he had somewhat wired in a seven pin trailer connector um <clears throat> you know i found a bunch of Conglomerate of wiring in here. And when I pulled out all the wiring, I noticed once I put the dash back together, the glow plugs didn't work anymore. That's weird. So I started tracing wires and I see this scotch clipped into the glow plugs. So that's cool. I figure out what that is. This man was having a hard time starting this truck. And so he wired in a toggle switch to the glow plugs so that he can either run glow plugs normally or have manual control. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, but you know, it's kind of odd. But yeah, so to overcome the bad injection pump, he thought it was glow plugs, I'm guessing, or the bad injection control module. And that's weird, so we're gonna fix that scotch clip. I've got the lights fixed, these little Fog lights in the bumper, I'm guessing they're not stock, but they fit real well and they look kind of nice. So I'm gonna leave them there. I gotta get new bulbs, they were blown. And the only thing he has on a relay was those front fog lights. The so rear lights, purely on a toggle switch with a fuse. I did find a uh, steering stabilizer. The back seat's not bolted down. I'm guessing because he ripped the subs out because the wiring, as you can see, ends right there. So I gotta bolt that back down. Yeah. So we got pretty much all the gremlins on this thing fixed, I think, and it fires up like a champ. Fuel gauge works now. Things are run good. <clears throat> I still got my oil cooler loop. I got an aftermarket oil cooler coming because the correct one was like $400. So we're gonna put that in tomorrow. And we'll finally get this thing on the road, take it for a good long shakedown test run. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking she's fixed. The only thing I got left to do is figure out why the interior lights don't come on. The switch works because it stops the beeping, but this don't come on. The little ones do. I'd probably, I'm sure the bulb was blown. But anyway, so I'm gonna throw this dash back together. And when this oil cooler comes in, we will throw it in and we will jump on down the road. Let's get to it. All right, so oil cooler is installed. This is just an aftermarket cooler I got from the Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, you can see I just kind of ran some hoses, which is what came in the kit. These hoses, the clamps, these are barbed fittings. Um, yeah, well, it should be good. We'll see. I'm going to do a little cold start here. And we'll see how she runs. A top drop, a little extra oil, just to count for the cooler.
All right, so we've got the truck running and driving good. The only issue left with this truck is it's hard to start after it sits. Cranks and cranks and cranks and sputters and smokes and cranks and it'll finally fire up. And I have noticed the last few times I've come out here to look. Well, you won't be able to see now, but you see how wet it is under here? It's actually diesel fuel. I've noticed a small puddle of diesel underneath the truck every time I shut it off. So what's happening is we get a leak somewhere, fuel's draining out of it. It's just repriming itself basically every time we try to crank it. Um, I have looked and I can't tell anything for certain. If you see down there is awful wet. I put new clamps on all the fuel lines down here. That, that fuel line looks a little wet. Um, can't really see a whole bunch, but what I did was aired on the side of caution. I ordered a new fuel filter housing. These things have a little heater on them. They were known to leak. These little aluminum housings can crack. Or it might also be a fuel line, but I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I got a new housing and I ordered some intake gaskets. We're gonna rip this intake off and replace the fuel lines and the housing and just be done with the darn thing. So what we're gonna do right now is pull all this off to get the intake off. Basically all you gotta do, pull the clamps for the turbo boot. I just unplug these and leave the sensors on them. This, the guy before me added this little turbo line for a gauge in there. Take that off, take the upper and take off. And then we'll pull all the bolts for lowers and we'll pop the intake off and see if we can figure out exactly what's leaking. So let's dive into it. Alright, with the intake off, you can really see just how much crap is in this truck. Um, nothing super obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's just fuel filter housing because it's wet on the bottom. So you can see everything's a little damp under here. But none of the injector lines look like they're leaking. Um, the injector itself looks pretty, or injection pump itself looks pretty dry. Can't really get down there and see, but if you can see that little guy is the heater if you can really see everything's wet from there down this hose is kind of wet so this back here looks a little wet this whole area is real wet you can see the leaves down there are soaked so if i were to guess let's say it's coming out of this pump yeah you see underneath this thing or this uh filter housing but regardless we are going to go ahead and replace these lines these two and if this one needs it, we'll replace that one. But we're going to go ahead and replace these lines. This one is your feed line to the pump. It goes right here. And then this one, I don't know what this is, a drain? It goes to this little guy, which is just a drain. It just drains it off. Um, I honestly don't know what the purpose of that is. If it drains the water, maybe? Water separate? I don't know. I ain't going to lie to you. I've had a bunch of these trucks, and I have no idea what it does. But regardless... That's looking like our culprit. As you can see this thing is clearly melted a little bit. I'm sure that heater doesn't work anymore. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and pop this out. We'll pull this uh, line off and replace it and that one. Um, and then we will get the new one in here and get the new intake gaskets on it. And we will put it back together. Hopefully that will be the last problem we have with this thing. So let's get this done. All right, I got the new filter housing in. I got some new lines run. Um, I didn't have any lines sent right size to replace the back, but it looks fine. I don't see any cracks or anything in it, so we're gonna run it right now. That I can get to with the intake on if that becomes a problem down the line. So we're gonna throw some new gaskets on here, throw the intake back on, and fire this bad boy up. See how she runs. So let's jump to it. All right, it's been sitting for a good 45 minutes since the last cranked it. Let's see how she does. Man, it's been a long journey with this truck. I bought this thing probably four months ago. 
I'd off and on work on it, but finally got it running good. It finally starts good. Goes down the road, no problem, and we are finally finished with it. Now this thing, I bought to flip it. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna, but we'll see where it goes. As of right now, we are finally done with this thing. So we're gonna end this video here. Whether this thing sticks around or not, we'll have to see. But as always, appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video.